It's been a tough year. Given this brave new world of online learning, I decided to upgrade my home office and get one of those new singing computers. You know, Adele. Of course, I'm a teacher, not a comic, but like others, I found myself on film desperately trying to figure out how to engage with our students in just two dimensions. Why is it so difficult to engage online compared to the classroom? Is it because we're not used to it? After decades of having the technology available to us, it is only now that we've been granted the social permission to use it. At Bayfield, our company pioneered the teaching of a very technical subject, real estate financial modelling, in the classroom that made it easy for people to learn. All our training has two objectives. A. Is it a good experience for the delegate? And perhaps more obviously, has the delegate actually learnt something? And we've maintained those founding goals into online learning. One of the benefits of the pandemic on learning theory is an increased interest in how students maintain interest and actively learn. We are a lifelong learning company and we practice what we, what we preach. Meet Jacob Noble, our commercial director. He joined nearly eight years ago as an apprentice age 19. He took MVQ level two and moved straight into level four in business management. Sonia martin Guterres, our CEO, joined around the same time. She is currently studying for a qualification in high impact leadership from the University of Cambridge. And I set up the company 22 years ago. I have decided to go back to university myself and study for a degree in mathematics. During this pandemic, we found ourselves in a unique position. I have experienced two recessions running a training company and survived. Sonia, Jacob and I met two weeks before lockdown and started preparing for the company in case of the worst. The entire company was completely ready to work from home the very day lockdown was announced. Bayfield started talking to delegates about alternative delivery and speeded up our webinar programme which had already been established two years. Immediately we were drafted in as a team to deliver a week-long residential programme to the Cambridge Real Estate Research Centre's course, the Masters in Real Estate, taking full responsibility to convert and deliver the programme online. This was followed by a training programme to University of Cambridge faculty on learning infrastructure and teaching content. And it's some of these insights that I want to share with you. Given that the requirement to shift was so sudden, we suggested to the university that an audit of the learning infrastructure was an important step. An audit of learning infrastructure is about sitting down and trying to understand how the people in your organisation are currently learning. For example, where are they currently going to get content and what type of content is it that they are consuming? Is it books, papers, articles from the library, spreadsheets borrowed from colleagues? the internet or a pay-as-you-go access service. Also, where are your students learning and collaborating? Is it only in the classroom, on WhatsApp, in the library or in the canteen? And how is learning scheduled? This is an important but overlooked part of the learning infrastructure in a holistic sense. Do students need scheduled lectures? How long is a course? Is content premiered weekly or the entire course available immediately? Are students timetabling themselves? And how are they doing this? An audit of the current infrastructure and conventions can be enlightening in itself, but taking this approach to making necessary improvements to the learning environment, rather than a technology-led approach, means that you are more likely to make whatever changes you decide upon stick. As you have seen, teaching content is just one part of the learning infrastructure. Teaching content is distinct from the more generic content in that it transforms original work or research into a teachable form. Again, by not taking a technology first approach, the content quadrant allows the instructor to decide what type of content to deliver and then decide on the technology most suited to its creation. Courses and teaching programmes may focus on one type of teaching content and or still incorporate all four. An objective approach at the outset is useful. It helps reduce the incremental specification of programmes as trainers become enamoured with the latest technology. Incremental specification tends to slow down the creation of training programmes or make them feel unfinished 
messy or undirected. In the audit and redesign of learning infrastructure and the choice of teaching content, focus should always remain on the organisation's resources and the student experience. The student experience will be affected by commitment and empathy from the organisation. A well thought through flexible plan can mitigate the lack of resources. It also helps with understanding what is most effective in the current format and helps understand where classroom based learning should be relaunched whenever it's safe to do so. Bayfield has developed principles and techniques for all types of teaching content. And the most common question is, how much time should we allocate between synchronous and asynchronous sessions? This is answered best by asking a different question. How can I achieve active learning in my subject area? An active learner is one that is inspired and engaged. A good video can be just as inspiring as a skilled teacher teaching synchronously. For example, videos benefit from a storyboard rather than the regurgitation of existing content. And we appreciate that this means more work for teachers rewriting material. However, solace can be taken from the principle that students appreciate shorter videos backed up by easily accessible written content. Also in your videos, less is more. A picture tells a thousand words, so let it. Think about how much information an advert can get across given the amount of words the advert actually uses. Finally, in your videos, ask your learners to think and then give them the answer. This aids the cognitive process. For example, you can ask at the end of your film, what did you learn today? And then tell them. But leave the difficult questions to assessments. A difficult question can create stress and can be counterproductive at early stages in the learning process. And we don't know yet what people miss by not being in the physical presence of one another whilst they're learning. It is one of the advantages of this huge experiment in online learning. We will start to understand what is gained and what is lost and discover the creativity that will undoubtedly rise to deal with this new paradigm. The traditional classroom is an easily understood three-dimensional environment in which teachers predominantly share two-dimensional content. Online classrooms, however, are two-dimensional spaces which, along with the traditional content, can make the teaching experience feel very flat. In our teaching at Bayfield, our goal is to try and reach through the screen and connect. Some of our top tips are as follows. One, open synchronous sessions as if you're starting an activity by an open campfire. This could be telling a story, playing a game or singing a song. This uses the principle of active learning from its very origins, passing history, culture and song through organisations and generations. Change the tempo and activity frequently. This maintains interest. Slow your voice and repeat important concepts. Tell a joke, say something personal, explore an infographic or the meaning of a photograph. It is also okay to use videos in synchronous sessions. Videos are passive, but they are also a change in activity with the added benefit that they actually allow the learner to rest without the need to drop out for a bit. Interaction demands attention. I've started financial modeling training, teaching students some sign language and encouraged its use throughout the session. It is also important to acknowledge as many people as you can in the room. This can be done by asking individual students to interact by answering vanilla questions. But remember, some meeting software favour those who talk, so you need to seek out people who haven't had the opportunity to contribute. And make your lean learners feel like they want to interact. Make them feel like they're getting their five minutes of fame rather than making them feel like you're putting them on the spot. And finally, you need to look after your students. Signpost your session. Let them know what they're going to get. And breaks are important. Don't poll a change to a scheduled break with short notice. There will be hidden needs that some students need to plan for in order to enjoy your session. Give them the rules of the session in advance, even if they are very flexible, and this provides a sense of security. Your adventure into online delivery will engage your learners if you favour authenticity over stark professionalism. A slick finish can be intimidating, 
especially when people are sharing images of the inside of their homes. Openly recognise you are in a paradigm shift and ask for feedback and understanding while you experiment with new formats. Express humility. Recognise you're here because of social permission created by the pandemic. Recognise multimedia skills are not a side dish. They are now a valuable skill in and of themselves. And finally, intend to change and follow through with your online delivery programme, but don't over-specify. Support your teaching team and your learners, but ultimately let them find their way. At this stage, intelligent observation and experimentation will have more leverage in the long run rather than, di rather than dictating learning environments now. It is okay to say out loud, I am learning too. So what did you learn today? Was it that understanding how organisation learns is more important than technology you implement? Was it a new, uh, a new appreciation of the different types of teaching content? Or was it perhaps one of our top tips on running synchronous sessions, such as changing temp tempo or activity frequently in your live sessions? Bayfield can help you with learning infrastructure audits and also advice on learning content and organisation appropriate cost effective learning technology. We are also leaders in leadership, strategy, entrepreneurship and financial modelling training. For more information, please do visit our website and follow us on our social media channels. And of course, feel free to reach out directly to Jacob, Sonia or myself. And we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much for listening.